Yo! No! I ran out of time! You saw me pre-move that. You saw me pre-move that. Alright, it is episode 6 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. Where I'm just trying to get as high of a rapid rating as possible. Currently at 1857. I'd like to get to at least 2000 ideally. Since that's where I think I probably belong. And our opponent goes for d4. I have been learning the Slav defense, so that's what we're going to play. c65. You can play d5 first, and then after c4, play c6. But I like to go c6 first to encourage my opponent to go e4 on move 2 to get a Karo Khan. But we get a mainline Slav. We're just going to develop the knight, shore up the d5 pawn again. Bishop f4. So there's a few ways we can play this. We can play in typical Slav fashion with bishop f5 and d6. Or we can play more of a semi-Slav and go for e6. So we don't get the bishop out. And instead, the benefit of that is that the bishop remains defending b7. So ideas of queen b3 attacking the b7 pawn aren't very scary. Here we can play bishop d6 to challenge our opponent's bishop, but you can just drop back or put a knight on e5. So I'm just going to go to e7, which is what I typically do. And we're just going to castle, get a knight to d7, play something like b6, bishop b7, and play for c5. So I think we're just going to continue with that plan. We can pretty much just get the setup we want. If white ever takes, then we take back and get a symmetrical structure. So white doesn't really want to do that. So let's go knight bd7. Just developing. h3 is played to give the bishop a hidey hole on h2. We can go h6 so that bishop isn't targeting the h7 pawn, which I think I'm going to do. Sorry, I don't know why my arrows are being weird let me see if i can correct that okay that might be better all right so castle don't okay i don't think it fixed it but i don't see a reason not to continue with b6 bishop b7 because obviously we've stopped the bishop from getting out on this diagonal by playing e6 early on. Just to keep things nice and solid. Also, if we go bishop to f5 early. Then we're kind of just mirroring our opponent. And it can be difficult to get much play. So our opponent goes a3. Looking for b4 to clamp down on the c5 square. So we could go c5 straight away. I'd like to go bishop b7 first though, so that after c5 takes, 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 we don't end up with a pawn there. So we could be at risk of getting an isolated d pawn. So I'd rather do this. I'm expecting b4. But after b4, we could probably go c5. Something like takes, takes, and b5. We could, hmm, we could play a6, maybe to try and discourage b5. I'm not sure it makes much of a difference. It might do, but then b6 is kind of weak. So, it's not simple. Not simple. So, I'm thinking a6. We could also play rook c8. I don't see a reason to though. Also, a6 is a nice move because when c5 is played, our opponent could play knight to. Come on, 
to b5. That's annoying. I don't think we want to take... I think we need to close this up. And maybe play for a5. Hmm. Tough. a4 is on the cards for white. Uh, I, I, I think we're going to have to try and switch to making e5 happen. So we have one defender. I'd love to get this bishop on c7 because it can't go to d6 because of the c5 pawn. We could try and rotate this knight somewhere to get the bishop on f6 and then a rook on e8. That makes a lot of sense because then we'll have a lot of cover for the e5 square. That's an odd move. What about a5? I thought a4 was basically the best move because he's not threatening anything. Our knight covers. But I don't really want to take either. I don't want to take. I guess we can't move this knight now, so it's kind of annoying. So there's that. Hmm. But if he ever tries to attack it, we can just take back with this knight. So I think I might actually try and do this. Or maybe rook e8, bishop f8, g6. So that the bishop defends h6. Okay, let's start with rook e8. Can't be a bad move. e4. Mm, it's a move. It's a move. Actually, I think we might have knight to f8. Yeah, so we can't take this because then our knight will be under attack and mate will be threatened. So, watch out for that. I think knight f8 makes sense just to cover h7 so that this knight can move now. It's a very cramped position, but white has to prove his advantage and I'm not sure he's going about it in the best way. I feel like he's looking for an instant win where there isn't one. So we might be able to take advantage of this. It's not bad. It could be a lot worse. Some, sometimes when you play the Slav, I've found you kind of just have to admit that you're going to get a worse position in a lot of cases, but you're going to have play and you're going to be able to fight back, which I'd rather have dynamic play or like just interesting counterplay rather than a dead equal position. It's just the way that I tend to play a more confrontational in a lot of cases. I don't really like dead boring positions unless I'm just going for a quick draw, which online there's no reason to ever go for a quick draw because it's, you know, you're playing online. Maybe unless you're against a title player. So okay, we don't actually have to take this. If he takes, we can take back with the e-pawn, and I think that benefits us. So let's not take for no reason. Now, we could trade some rooks. I don't really see how that benefits us, though. This isn't a move. We could drop the other knight back to d7, now that this, this knight covers h7, and then look to trade quite like that. I think that's a good a good plan. Now the only problem is that d6 and b6 are quite weak. But our opponent has no good way of getting to those squares. Now if we would have taken him, then the knight could have got there, but obviously we would have, would have traded so that we wouldn't have allowed that. But if we force him to take us, we can retain control over e4 by taking back with the e-pawn. And I'm more concerned about this knight, because this knight is very active, so I'd rather try and trade that off. Okay, our opponent threatens bishop h6 because the 
G pawn will be pinned to the king. Now we can take because bishop takes h6 is met with knight g6. But if knight e5, bishop e5, then I'm not sure what we do. Because knight g6 isn't as good because of takes, and then the bishop gets opened onto the knight. Sorry the arrows are so bad. I don't really know why that is. Yeah, this isn't a move. Now there is bishop g5. Trying to trade the bishops. Which I actually think I like. Now, if he takes us. We could take with the pawn or the queen. We're going to get double pawns either way. Not sure which I prefer. I think probably the queen, because if I take with the pawn, then f4. And the attack looks quite scary. So if bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes, then f4. He's got no queens on the... the, the there's no queens on the board. So, the, so even though he gets a very active rook on the f-file, uh, he's, he's not going to mate me, realistically. Because he has no queen. So I think this might be the best idea. And we're essentially offering to trade two of our most passive pieces. Well, all our pieces are quite passive, to be honest. For two very active pieces. So it makes sense. It makes sense. So yeah, I think I need to go for a queen trade here. Because if we take with the h-pawn, then f4 looks way too dangerous way too dangerous especially because f2 will be under a lot of fire from the knight and the rook so i don't really want to go into that okay knight e2 it's nice So if we take i assume he wants to take with the knight but we're under no obligation to take we could take e4, there, 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 and then there, there, and his bishop defends d4, but then, ah, we don't have f6 because the bishop goes to d6, hmm, that could be an issue. Wait. Wait. What if we take? Okay, queen takes. Yeah, cool. And now, knight takes. Trading off some very active pieces here, which I'm very happy about. Queen takes. I don't really want to take here. I'd rather him take me. Um, knight g6. I like that. I'd like to play queen f6. Oh, we may have this. No, because then this. Queen f6, I'm a bit worried about e5. Hmm. Let's think. This is an idea. Then queen c7. Queen c7, rook e7, queen b6, rook a6, 
Then the queen gives a check. Queen b8. I really need to trade queens. e5 is going to be played. I'm going to have to drop the knight back. f4, f5 looks dangerous. So f4, queen d8, f5. I think we're going to have to go for queen g5. Because otherwise f6 is going to be a big problem. That's a really good move. Let's take. That's been hanging forever. And. Hmm. Should go f5 ourselves. Let's do it. If en passant, we take with the queen. And maybe we're getting a bit of play. Although it's not pretty. Now I'm expecting rook a8 because... Well, actually no, if rook a8 then queen takes. Because our king side is safe. Because you can't play en passant the move after. So maybe we're alright. And the big problem is all of these light squared pawns lock the bishop in. We're going to have to do some mad maneuvering to try and get on this diagonal. Because that's it, the bishop's only way out. Which isn't great. But on the other hand, it also restricts this bishop. So it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. That is kind of just what happens in the Slav sometimes. Your bishop just gets stuck. Well... In the semi-slav, the proper slav, the bishop gets out of the pawn chain first. He wants to go g4. Okay. I want to go g6. Wow, okay, no, g3. Well, I'm happy to see that. Happy to see that. Um, that's play really quick. He's going to flag us. But not careful. Looks like it should be a dead draw. Except for the fact that there's knights. Except for the fact that there's knights. Okay, we've got to keep a pawn on h6 so that the knight can't come to g5. Okay, now we're going to try and trade off the heavy pieces. Probably should just end in a draw. Realistically. I don't think we've really had a chance to push for a win. Oh, whoa. He's going to keep him on. Okay. Interesting. Ah, the knight wants to infiltrate. Okay. Now we're going to get our bishop to e8. Which is where it wanted to be all along. Don't know what I'm doing. Getting flagged probably. Oh, that's... Ugh. It's really not nice. Whoa, okay. He's really just let us off the hook there.
This should be dead, dead draw. Oh my god, I hung this. I hung it. Oh no. Not good. I hung another pawn. Mm. And another pawn. And another pawn. Oh god. He's play I I've got no time here. Yo! No! I ran out of time! You saw me pre-move that. You saw me pre-move that. That was mate. <laughs> oh my god. I pre-moved it. Oh, what? Whoa. So that was a crazy game. We're in the game analysis now. I, I, I can't believe that. Like, I literally had mate. I, I literally mated him. He, he was checkmated. <laughs> and the server didn't get my move in time, apparently. Jesus. But okay. Realistically, I didn't deserve to win that game anyway. Let's not delve too much on the opening. I think I spoke about it a fair bit during the game. B6 is the idea to develop the bishop out here because it can't come out of the pawn chain that way. A6, yeah, allows C5. So here I need to play C5 myself. Now, what I was worried about was something like... Ah, I was worried about something like this. But... I see that I can take on b4 first. Okay. I'll bear that in mind for next time. But a6 allows c5. And I thought I had to block it up. And here, like I said, I was expecting a4, but he didn't play it. So I played a5 myself. Rook e8 is good. Knight f8 is good. e4. I don't know why there's an error classifying the move. Um... Let's see if I can get it to stop saying that. So then I challenge the knight. If he takes me, then I'm very happy. Because I get rid of an active piece. And I can maybe take here. Or I can maybe go for e5 in the future. But he plays well. And he goes queen g3. Prefers bishop h4. Which I did consider to attack the queen. I wasn't sure about this. I take, take. Knight g6. And if takes. Ah, I can take the bishop first. And then I'm good. Hmm, I did not see this. Did not see this, which is why I went bishop g5. And the idea was if he takes. Then I can try and trade everything like this and just play an end game where I'm a bit worse, but I maybe have some chances. Knight e2 is a mistake though, because of bishop takes f4, which I found. And then knight e5, queen e5. It's an inaccuracy. It's better to take with the d pawn. Seems counterintuitive. But maybe it's okay. So here I actually have chances. But I have to take on e4. And then drop the knight back. Ah, and maybe put the knight on d5. Then bring the bishop back and go for e5. I thought that I had no play here. And my bishop was really passive. Because this diagonal is still blocked off by the pawn. 
but that makes sense. <sighs> yeah, queen b8, e5, and I just have no play. I really do. My idea after f5 was to play queen g5 and try and trade the queens off. Something like this. And if he takes me, I can take with the knight and I'm all good. And if he pushes, then I can probably take. And maybe it's not comfortable, but e5 is now on the cards. So I feel like I've got play in this position. H4 is nice because it stops queen g5. So f5 I thought was a nice move to block up the king side. King h7 is a miss because of g4. But he doesn't play it. My plan was g4, g6. And this. This. H5. Ah, okay. That makes sense. But he didn't see it. Here I just got way too low on time. I kind of forgot the fact that there's no increment. So, I don't think I played this very well. And then I tried to trade all the rooks. Don't know whether this was a good idea or not. The computer doesn't mind it. The problem is the knight gets into a5, which is really annoying. I feel like I play it well to get my bishop onto a better square. The bishop's far better placed on e8, looking at h5 and c6 at the same time. Hmm. Here I just hang a put. No, I allow knight b7, which is not good. But then he retreats. I don't know why he didn't just go to d6. Because I'm going to have to take it. And then he's going to get a really strong pass pawn. But he went for this. We trade. Managed to block the position up. And here is a dead draw. Except I hang a pawn. Here all I, I've, I've just got to shuffle my queen on the A file. So that his queen can't infiltrate. And a zero play. As long as he can't take on C6. It's that simple. But I was low time. I hung a pawn. And I managed to get the knight to cause a few problems. But realistically it's nothing. I was quite happy with the way I manoeuvred my queen though. To get in with queen a6. And I'm literally mating him. Queen f1 is mate. I had no time. Queen d3. Queen d2. And mate was on the board. <laughs> mate was on the board. And I didn't play it. Oh no, I did play it. I just didn't have time. Because the move didn't register or something. Oh my god. That's chess for you. That's online chess for you. I can't be too mad. I'm happy with the fact that I brought that game back. But chess.com. Man, what have you got against me? What have I done to deserve this? <laughs> oh, my days. If you stuck around till the end of the video, thank you very much. Um, I'd recommend checking out the previous episodes in the playlist, which is linked below, because this is episode six. And I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.